All right, and here we are again with the Daily Nime on our Procurement Zen YouTube channel. Today we are going to proceed with our evaluation or our comparison, if you want, um, on how Nime deals with similar Excel functions, basically. And today we're going to cover average. All right, are you ready? Then let's go. So let's just quickly switch over to the monitor and to the screen and let me show you what we're going to build today. So what you are seeing here is pretty similar to the one we did in day number three, um, where we covered if. However, the result, we will also have an average purchase order value. So I think this is how we do it. We import the file, we then apply the rule engine just as we did in the last video. Then we group, applying this time also not only the sum function, but also the average function, and finally write it to our Excel file. Then let's just start building it. All right, we once again will start with the Excel reader as before to import our base file. And maybe this time we just do it a little bit differently. Rather than using the search here in the nine node repository, we just go through the categories here in the node repository. You find the Excel reader in the IO category and in the read subcategory. And there, very first thing we see is the Excel reader. We just drag and drop it onto our canvas. F2 for labeling it, and once again, we call it import base file. Then we just hit this um, or select it, and then uh, hit F6 on our keyboard to open the configuration window. Once again, we're going to read this relatively to our current workflow, browse for it, and the data as before. It can be found here. It's the example data set, and now I'm immediately Review uh, uh, imports it and gives us a preview here six columns or seven columns and 10,000 rows. That looks pretty good. We leave all other options as they are. Click OK. And then we just execute the selected node with this green little arrow icon here above. Do it. OK. Everything looks good. Let's just see. Yeah looks fine. All the data types that are indicated by these small little um, letters in front of the uh, column headers look good. This is a number, a text, a text, a text, a text, a number and a date. That looks pretty good. So the very next thing we're going to do, just as in the last video, just for repetition purposes, so to say, we are going to apply a rule engine. All right, F2 to label it. We label it, um, let's say, at fiscal quarter. All right. Double click for configuration. And this time we just delete this stuff here above and we start writing our formula if you want. So, what we want to compare is um, PO delivery date. And once again, our base file starts October 1st, 2018 and ends September 30th, um, 2019. So our fiscal year in this example goes from October 1st to next year's September 30th. So the first quarter goes from uh, October until December and so on. So this should be um, greater than or equal to and now we don't have to forget the, the um, right uh, way to write this. This is in um, pasta freeze uh, 2018 10 1. And then we're going to apply an end because it needs to meet for quarter one, it needs to meet two conditions. So it's an end that we add here. And once again, PO delivery date less than or equal to. 2018, 12, 31. And then we just make, uh, create this little arrow by um, the equal sign and the greater than uh, sign, and we call this Q1. All right. 
and we add this to a specific column and this new column will be called fiscal quarter. All right, let's just give this a quick try and see if it worked. Right click on the selected node, execute. Let's just see. Yeah, looks good. All right, so now we can do copy paste. We do the very same formula just with different dates here in the second row. So that will be January 1st until 2019, March 31st. And of course, this will be Q2. Then for Q3, we will have 2019, oops, that's wrong. 2019 April 1st until 2019 June 30th that will be Q3 and everything that is neither Q1 Q2 or Q3 will be of course Q4 so we can just shorten this a little bit everything else is Q4 all right let's execute it right click execute let's see yes this looks all very good once again we're going to use the group by node because we want to group, as in the last example, by the fiscal quarters. All right. We label it group by fiscal quarter. And we can also make it bold. So just select it and then control B makes it bold. And we need to open the configuration once more. We want to group by the fiscal quarter. And now comes the new part. The first thing is the same as uh, last time, the PO value. We will have a sum here. And then we will add the same column once again. And this time we leave it with mean, which is the way of nine for saying, hey, this is an average value. One thing that is quite important here, and let me just quickly um, show you why this wouldn't work if we do it like last time. So keep original names. Naim says, hey guys, this is not possible because we would have two columns with PO value, and that's not something that we want. So here we cannot keep the original names because column names need to be unique in Naim. So we just say, OK, we take the column name and in um, brackets, we write the aggregation method, which would be sum for the first added column and mean for the second added column. All right. Let's just execute this one. And this looks good. Let's have a look by right clicking on it and looking at the group table. We see now also some kind of yeah, lime internal formatting applied here. And looks like Q3 is probably the, um, the uh, quarter with the highest average values here. And the very last thing, as always, is we want to write this down to an Excel file. So let me quickly show you where you can find this. It's in in and out, this time in write. And we take the Excel writer here with the group by note still selected. We double click on the Excel writer to automatically create the connection, the arrow from the out port of the group by node to the import of the Excel writer and shift control right arrow moves it around up down like this. F2 write to Excel. Okay. And now once again, selecting the node, pressing F6 opens the configuration. Once again, we are going to write this to our current workflow data area. Browse. Let's just go here. Data, and we already have a file in here, and we call it volume and average by quarter. Save. And as this file already exists, we want to override it. We call this now PVO by quarter. and average PVO, all right? Auto size columns. And then with one final 
press of F7, it gets written to the file. All right, so let me quickly show you once again how to find that file. You just right click on the, uh, on the, on the um, uh, Excel file that you have created, copy location, um, local path, and then we just open up the Explorer, write it in here. I delete usually the file name like this, and there we have it. I just double click it. Takes a moment to start Microsoft Excel here. So, takes a moment longer, longer obviously. So let's just quickly... Um, oh no! Yeah, takes a moment, unfortunately. Um, does that go fast? Nee. Obviously not. And here we have our written Excel file. So in one of the future videos, we are going to also um, show you a very nice extension, just as said before, um, how we can um, format all this kind of stuff and even mail it if we want to, so that we have a decent automated workflow. I think that's pretty nice. Don't you think so? So make sure to like and subscribe if you like this way of automating your spreadsheets. Um, also, if you have any feedback or anything, just leave a comment down below, below this live stream. And um, let's just, um, I'm, I'm trying to make everything happen that you guys want. Um, so yeah, um, hope you like and tomorrow we will proceed uh, with just another um, uh, replacement of an Excel formula in nine. Until tomorrow, see you then. Bye-bye.